In my last video, I talked about Chrome OS Flex, which is a version of Chrome OS that you can install on any computer, neither need to be a Chromebook. You can go check that video out right up there. But in this video, I'll be going over how to install Linux apps on Chrome OS. And this doesn't just work on Chrome OS Flex, but this will work on any Chromebook. I'll be going over how to install traditional Linux packages as well as flat packs. I did try to install snaps, but I wasn't able to get that working. But anyway, enough talk. Let's get into the video. All right, so the first thing you need to do is set up your Linux development environment on your Chromebook. To do this, just go into Settings, Advanced, Developers, and then find Linux Development Environment and click Turn On. Now, if it says that your device is unsupported, in my experience, you will need a Google account to set this up. So make sure that you're signed into a Google account and not a guest account. But anyway, once you're in this window, you're gonna click next, select a username for the development environment. You can go with the recommended disk size, which is 10 gigabytes, depending on how big your Chromebook's drive is. But you might wanna allocate more because 10 gigabytes, you're not gonna be able to fit a whole lot on there, but you can change this later in settings. But anyway, once you're happy with this, just click install, and it'll install the Linux development environment. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, and once that installation is done, it'll boot you straight into your terminal, and now we can start installing Linux apps. So we can close this settings app. We won't need it from this point forward. So to install apps, we're gonna use the apt command, which is the package manager on Debian and Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu. This Linux virtual machine is based on Debian. So to search for apps, what you're gonna do is do apt search along with your search term. For example, Firefox, and then it'll list out all the packages that match those search terms in alphabetical order based on package name. But what I'm gonna do is scroll up and find the package that matches what we're looking for. In this case, it's Firefox ESR. And if you're highlighting text in the terminal, the great thing about Chrome OS is that it will automatically copy the text once you release the mouse button. So we can just scroll back down and type sudo apt install and then paste in our package name, which in this case is Firefox ESR. Now the sudo is important here because installing or removing packages on Linux requires administrative privileges. But anyway, let's hit enter and it'll go install Firefox. Oh, we need to confirm that we want to install the package by hitting enter and then it'll go download and install Firefox or whatever package you want to install. All right so now that Firefox is installed we can come to our launcher here and we can see that Firefox ESR is right there. We'll just give that a second to launch and there it is. We've got Firefox on Chrome OS, running in the Linux development environment. In order to update your Linux packages, just do sudo apt update to check for updates. And by the way, if you ever get a 404 not found error when trying to install a package, just do sudo apt update and give it another go. But it says here that 50 packages can be upgraded. So we're gonna do a sudo apt upgrade to actually install the updates. Hit enter to confirm that and let it update. All right, so now our update's done. And that concludes the main part of the video. If you also want to have Flatpak support on your Chromebook, head over to this guide, link in the description, published on Flatpak's official website and this is specifically for Chrome OS. So the first step, which we've already done, is to enable Linux support. And the second step is to enable nested containers. So first we need to 
close the Linux development environment. Yes, leave the app. And now we're gonna open Chrome and hit Control T to open a crosh window or Chrome OS developer shell. And then we're gonna copy and paste these commands. First is VMC start termina. Okay, and now we're gonna copy this LXC config command. And all these commands are on this guide. And then exit out of termina. And then we're gonna do VMC stop termina, which will close out any Linux apps that we may have open. Okay, and now once that command finally finishes, it does actually take a little while, we can close up this crosh window and then go back into our Linux terminal, start up our Linux instance by clicking on Penguin. And now we just run sudo apt install flatpak. Press enter to confirm the installation of flatpak and let it do its thing. And then once Flatpak finishes installing, we need to add the FlatHub repository, which is the official Flatpak repo. To do that, we'll just copy and paste this long command, paste it in our terminal, and run it. There we go, and now the last step is to shut down our Linux virtual machine by right-clicking on the terminal icon in our dock and clicking shut down Linux. And that will also close out any Linux apps that we have open. But now we can restart it. Give it a second to start up. So the best way to search for Flatpak applications is by going to flathub.org, not to be confused with flatpak.org. Let's say you wanna install Visual Studio Code. You can search for Visual Studio Code in the search bar, and then there we go, it's one of the first ones. I know it's a Microsoft app, but anyway. What we're gonna do is scroll all the way down to manual install towards the bottom of the page, and then just copy the install command and paste it in our terminal, and then hit enter to confirm the repo, and enter again to confirm the installation. So again, this will take a little while, so just let it do its thing. All right, now once that installation is complete, we can find it in our menu. It may go into a folder called Linux apps, but anyway, we can open it just like we would any other app. And there we go. We can see that the app runs. We can interact with the menus. So now if you want to remove an app installed with Flatpak, you'd still copy and paste the install command, but you just replace install with remove. And by the way, if you wanted to remove a Linux app installed through APT, you just right click on its icon and then click uninstall. So now if you want to install a Linux app from the web, which is not recommended for security reasons, among other reasons, what you do is preferably you get a .deb file. What you do with that is you just download it and then go to your files. Depending on what browser you downloaded that with, it'll either be in your downloads, in your main downloads, or in your downloads under Linux files. In my case, since I did it with Firefox, which is a Linux app, it went under Linux files. But anyway, I just double click this .deb file, give it a second to load the information, and then just click install. And then it'll start installing. All right, now that the installation is complete, again, it'll show up in our menu, possibly under Linux apps, and then we can open the application. In this case, for the Minecraft launcher, we just have to wait for it to do its first launch spiel. But if you want to remove an application installed from a .deb file, same thing, you just right click on its icon, on, and then click uninstall. And by the way, you cannot do this with flatback applications, you have to remove those through the terminal. And then once that's installed, you just sign into your Minecraft account and then you can play the game as normal. Now, one last thing I wanna mention, if you remove the Linux development environment, 
it will delete all your Linux apps and any data associated with them, as well as any data that you have stored under Linux files. So just keep that in mind if you ever want to remove the Linux development environment and go back to a stock Chrome OS state. And that's it for this video. Give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.